I pray that you'll assign a hundred thousand angels to cover her head. Thank you, dear Lord, that you have given her this moment to defy the odds in front of the entire world. Now, God, not for her name, but we promise we're going to give you all of the victory. Not by might, not by power, but only by your spirit. And those of you who believe that Kamala Harris was born for this moment. She's moving from this place. She's moving from this place. We've got two and a half weeks. We got two and a half weeks. But I want her to remember in fond recollection in Atlanta, Georgia, they prayed for her, that they covered her, and that they strengthened her. Here's my issue. And I'm going to be as respectful as possible. Let me ask you guys this one thing. Those of these pastors, these people who are praying over Kamala Harris, how did you feel when her and Joe Biden gave money in order to bomb Jesus home of Bethlehem on Christmas Day of last year? I have to speak my piece. So let's go back to January 2nd, 1998. There once was a young man named James, and this young man was 14 and a half years old. This 14 and a half year old James decided to take the plunge. Literally, that was the day that I got baptized and I was an ordained minister at 14. 14. Of course, I was part of the organization, the Christian Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses. I say Christian Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses because, number one, that's how they uh, call themselves in all legality. But also, I say Christian Congregation because a lot of times people will say, well, Jehovah's Witnesses, are they Christian? Yes, they are. With that being said, you can rightfully say that for me, preaching door to door, preaching about Jesus and his father, Jehovah, that I was an evangelical by definition. So I can speak with a little bit of authority on this issue in regards to what these pastors are doing to people like Kamala Harris, or I should say for Kamala Harris. I want to first go to a particular video that I saw that I'm gonna be honest with you. I say shame on these pastors because ultimately what they're doing is antithetical to what Christian values really are. Now, I say I am a former evangelical. I do not consider myself staunchly Christian anymore. We can get into the belief system that I hold, but that'll be, gosh, a 40 to 45 minute conversation by itself. But I definitely want to speak about this. So let me get into this. Uh, I want to examine this, I say, prayer and why it's so problematic. And so this took place on Kamala Harris's birthday. <laughs> Let's see this. Let me enlarge this. So I guess her name is Kim Writes for You. She says, unapologetically black, positive, and unbothered. Well, that may be a problem. She says she was born 
for such a time as this. And then she brings up Esther chapter four, verse four. Hang on, let me take a look at that. What, what does Esther chapter four, verse four say? Because I would like to see, uh, Okay, it says, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish, and who knows but who and who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Okay. So that's what Esther chapter four, verse four says. That's basically what she's trying to essentially give attention to. Let's get into this and let's examine line by line. Around your daughter, no hurt, harm, or danger. I pray that you'll assign a hundred thousand angels to cover her head. Thank you, dear Lord, that you have given her this moment to defy the odds in front of the entire world. Now, God, not for her name, but we promise we're going to give you all of the victory. Not by might, not by power, but only by your spirit. And those of you who believe that Kamala Harris was born for this moment, would you give God glory for her even in this? I'm waiting for the prayer warriors to open up your mouth. She's moving from this place. She's moving from this place. We've got two and a half weeks. We got two and a half weeks. But I want her to remember in fond recollection in Atlanta, Georgia, they prayed for her, that they covered her, and that they strengthened her. Here's my issue. And I'm going to be as respectful as possible because there are a lot of Christians in my family. Um, and I know many people who are Christian. Let me ask you guys this one thing. Those of these pastors these people who are praying over Kamala Harris. How did you feel when her and Joe Biden gave money in order to bomb Jesus' home of Bethlehem on Christmas day of last year? Were you praying for them then? Did you pray for them after the first thousand people were murdered in Gaza? Did you pray for them after the second thousand that were murdered in Gaza? How about the third, the fourth, the seventh? I want to know what would behoove you to want to give strength to a person that is this devoted to the extermination of the people that live in the land of Christ. How? Are you so blind to the atrocities that you do not see the monster before you? that you do not see that there is a, a charlatan, a, a fraud within your midst. And make no mistake, I'm not saying this because I support Trump. I'm saying this because she's too much like Trump. And those of you who would demonize Trump and yet you are praying for Kamala within your 
sacred place of a church. You mean to tell me that the crimes he did is reprehensible, but the crimes that she's currently doing that's similar to a lot of the crimes that he did as president, you're going to just gloss those over? The Lancet put out estimated over 200,000. And it's not just Palestinian Muslims. It's also Palestinian Jews and Palestinian Christians. Your brothers and sisters. Your brothers and sisters in the faith that were murdered by the very person that you literally are praying over in your midst. Shame on you. Shame on you. How dare you? How dare you? Place somebody like that in your midst and think God is with somebody like her. God is no more with Kamala Harris than God is with Donald Trump. And yet, you somehow want to pray over her in the black church. I'm going to show you what this reminds me of. Let me show you. Because I don't want people coming in and go, oh, JB, you're 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 vying for Trump. No, no, I'm not. Mm -mm. Let me share this with y'all. This is one of the greatest men. And before we start out, we'd like to pray over him. And we know we are people of prayer. So will you stretch your hands and pass and um, President Trump? These are some of your greatest faith leaders. They would love to pray over you. Pastor Jensen's gonna start, Apostle Maldonado, and uh, we love you. Will everybody just stretch your hands towards the president before he gets up? Because we know that prayer makes a difference. Let's all pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we thank you for this nation that was born in 1776. We pray in 2020 it would be born again. We pray for your spirit. So while we're basically showing this, what is the difference? Pray tell. Between praying over this war criminal or the other one. They both want to continue in the extermination of the people in Gaza because it serves the interests of the empire. And yet, you find it in your hearts to pray for this person, for them to have success? Success over Killing children? Look, I'm going to share with you something. Because I think it's important that uh, we bring attention to this. So I'm going to let you guys know, full disclosure, I am the pre one of the press directors. I'm one of the press directors for the Jill Stein 2024 campaign. Right, I've said it before. I've actually made an announcement here. Full disclosure, right? Everybody knows. But one of the things that I definitely want to share, and I think that's really important, is that those of you who are religious, whether it be Christian, Muslim, Jewish, uh, it could be Hindu, it could be Wiccan, I don't care what it is. I think you have a duty to call in and check 
people of the same faith if they are going against the values in which you uphold. Butch Ware did just as much to Ilhan Omar. Uh, let's get into that really quick. And then I'll give you guys what I said afterwards. So here is Mehdi Hassan speaking with Ilhan Omar about Butch Ware criticizing her for being a Muslim and supporting Kamala Harris. Just on the Green Party, though, what is your argument? when people say they're voting Green. A lot of people are criticizing uh, Muslims who support Harris. The Green Party now has a vice presidential candidate who is Muslim. Uh, Butch Ware, he was on this show recently on Instagram. He called you, quote, beyond reprehensible, he said about you, after you praised a group of Somali community leaders for endorsing Harris. He has also suggested that Muslims who vote for Harris or endorse Harris are not proper Muslims. They're hypocrites, that they have betrayed the people of Gaza. What's your response? Well, I don't know who this person is, um, but clearly um, it is, always wrong uh, for a candidate to um, characterize the people who are opposed to them or supporting their their opponents in the ways in which uh, he has done. And, you know, I was born Muslim, I will die Muslim, and I do not have a qualifier to my Muslimness that I worry about. So, here's what I said. As a former evangelical Christian, I would tell Christ what I tell Christians that they're abandoning their faith or voting for voting for either genocidal candidates. Yes. If they put their faith first, then you hold them to that. It would be no different than the prophet Nathan confronting King David about his atrocious actions of murdering Uriah and his adultery with Uriah's wife Bathsheba. Christians need to hold other Christians to account for their actions. If it's not Christ-like, then you deserve to be checked on it. Settler colonialism is wrong. And if God said you must not cover another man's wife, bull or ass, then I think it's safe to say the same for another man's land. So helping Zionists to cover, covet other people's land is a sin. Zionist Christians are some of the most anti-Christian people I have ever seen. They will cheer on Israelis for murdering their brothers and sisters in Palestine who are also Christian. It's sickening. Supporting Harris or Trump puts you in that same camp. Ilhan Omar, how do you square this circle? So Christians who are praying for people like a Kamala Harris or a Donald Trump, how do you square the circle of someone who continues the oppression of other marginalized people around the globe. How do you square that circle? How do you square the circle for the people who are literally doing the persecution? You're praying for the King Herods. You're praying for the Pontius Pilots. You're praying for the Caesars. That's who you're praying for. This is not like Jonah uh, with Nineveh, right? This is not like, oh my God, they're a nation of people who are absolutely horrible. And th But then once they hear that God was going to judge them and destroy them, then they repent it and turn around. It was not like that. People like Kamala Harris and Donald Trump are unrepented murderers, and you are literally allowing them, laying on the hands and praying for them. And don't give me this, oh, well, they're working tirelessly for a ceasefire. If you're working tirelessly for a ceasefire, that means that you cut off the means that would murder the people who you say you're trying to save. I think it would be Look, if I knew that you were going to harm somebody, why would I give you money to purchase that weapon? And if I say that I don't want you to harm anybody, but I still give you money to buy that weapon, am I complicit? 
Kamala Harris is still complicit. Does this put your faith into question? Yes. JB, you're judging. Yes. According to you who are supposed to put your faith first. Is that what you want to do? Look, you say only God can judge you. Guess what? Go ahead. But if you truly believe that so the soul survives the death of the body and all those Palestinian souls come approaching you at the end of the day, well, why did you pray over my murderer? Let that be on your conscience. But to those Christian pastors who are praying over people like Trump and praying over people like Kamala Harris, you are wrong. And I ain't afraid to say it because it shouldn't have happened. But yet, of course, you guys don't believe in the separation of church and state. Except when it comes to taxes. <laughs> Thank you so very much for watching my channel and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much, and you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses, and have a beautiful day.